There's seven decisions from the U.S. Supreme Court uh, during its 2019-2020 session that are of interest to employment lawyers. One big one involved the question of whether Title VII protects gays and transgender individuals from discrimination under Title VII. And the court was very clear that Title VII prohibits discrimination because of sex of the individual, sex meaning gender, and that in order to engage in uh, discrimination against a gay or transgender individual, the decision maker necessarily has to consider sex of that individual. So it is a violation of Title VII. Then we have two cases involving religion. We had two Catholic grade schools that fired uh, fifth grade teachers, and those teachers claimed that they were fired in violation of anti-discrimination laws. And the court has this uh, First Amendment principle called the ministerial exception, which says that a religious institution can hire or fire whoever they want without any interference from the government, and in particular, these anti-discrimination statutes. So the question was whether fifth grade teachers were, quote, ministers under that principle. And the court said, look, uh, these teachers are there in order to propagate the faith of the church, and they lead the children in prayer and uh, take them to chapel and all those kinds of things. So yes, they are ministers under this definition, and they do not have a claim under the anti-discrimination laws. The other religion case was the Affordable Care Act contraceptive mandate. There's a government regulation that requires certain health care providers uh, that are provided by employers to cover contraceptives. And uh, this regulation also carves out an exception uh, for private companies, uh, nonprofit organizations uh, that have a religious or moral objection. And the court said, look, this was never provided by the statute. It was provided by a government regulation. And the agency that created that uh, mandate also has the power to create exceptions to that mandate. Then we have two cases involving causation. The question arose under the Age Discrimination Act for federal employees, uh, and the question was whether but-for causation is required. The court said, no, uh, any discrimination under that statute, because of the particular way it was written, is going to be a violation. However, if the individual employee wants a, what I would call a real tangible remedy like uh, reinstatement or uh, money damages, then that employee also has to prove that the discrimination was the cause of an injury that is uh, to be remedied. Then we have a case that arose under 42 United States Code 1981, which prohibits race discrimination uh, in contracts, which of course would apply both to uh, employment contracts and also uh, independent contractor contracts. And the question there was uh, whether but for causation is required. The, the plaintiff wanted to apply basically a Title VII uh, principle which says that if race was any motivating factor, uh, there's going to be liability, but the court said, no, this statute is different, and it does require but-for causation to be proved. And finally, we have two ERISA cases. One involved the question of when does the statute of limitations begin to run uh, in a breach of fiduciary relationship case, uh, and the court said uh, the statute begins to run when the beneficiary receives actual knowledge of the alleged breach. Uh, the fact that the employee might have uh, had a lot of documents available is not enough. Uh, you have to prove that it, it, it actually came into the beneficiary's awareness, actual knowledge. 
And finally, we had a case where beneficiaries in a defined benefit plan sued the plan for mismanagement. And the court said, look, these people don't even have standing to bring a suit because they have a defined benefit. They're going to get the same amount of money whether they win this case or lose this case. So that case gets thrown out on the basis that those beneficiaries uh, lacked standing. So these are the seven cases that I think are important from the Supreme Court's recent term. Thank you for watching.